behavioral neurology is a subspecialty of neurology itself, yet it expands across every other subspecialty of neurology with cognitive and behavioral issues that come out no matter what part of neurology you're looking at. And we really recognize that when we put together the curriculum for the fellowship here, so that our fellow gets extensive experience in a subspecialty clinic focusing on memory disorders and behavioral disorders, but at the same time, they have exposure to other clinics and opportunities and programs throughout the university that gets them the experience of thinking about behavior in the context of other aspects. We want to make each uh, fellowship experience unique to that trainee. So everyone who comes gets that important clinical foundation, but we also want to train the next generation of educators and then everyone also gets a research opportunity. And our goal is to make the fellowship individual so that everyone gets the training they need to be successful in the careers that they want. We were really one of the first programs to develop a, a behavioral neurology fellowship. In general, I would say um, probably about 75% of our fellows go into academic positions. It's almost any university that you go to. Uh, we probably have one of our former trainees who's leading that uh, uh, program. A lot of our programs are headquartered at the Fixell Institute, and where we get multidisciplinary care under one roof. And so during a typical clinical visit, a fellow might be interfacing with a psychiatrist, a neuropsychologist, a physical therapist, occupational therapist, all of whom have experience in memory and cognitive disorders and we get to interface with them in real time. That's really important so that we can provide holistic care to the patients and families who come to us, but it also results in a really rich learning environment. Here at the University of Florida, we're a core member of the state's memory disorders centers programs, and we get our fellows opportunities to see everything in memory disorders from across the entire spectrum, from what's now called brain health and trying to prevent cognitive decline as people get older, to every level and stage that there is of the various dementias, as well as kind of any type of behavioral issues that can come about. Living in Gainesville, it's a delightful place to live in. Almost everybody you meet in the city has interest in education, has interest in culture, and most important, it's one of the most humane, caring places that I've ever lived or have lived. And although we're a small city in the deep south, it's hard to find a greater or more diverse multicultural city than in Gainesville. I love it here, and I feel so blessed that I've lived here for 50 years.